Hey folks, um, I'm up now. Um, if you saw the last video I um, uploaded this morning of the fire across the street, that woke me up literally this morning. Um, <clears throat> a little background. Um, <clears throat> the street I live on in, in uh, part of North Omaha, I live in the most notoriously uh, considered dangerous part of Omaha. Mm. It really is no more dangerous than any other part of the city. It has a reputation, though. One 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 is what they call my uh, <laughs> uh, area. Anyway, a few days ago, on my side of the street, some newer neighbors got busted. It was a big bust. I think I might have mentioned it in a video. Cops crawling. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so. I was awakened this morning, laying in bed by <clears throat> voices outside, you know, and one was rather excited. And so my first thought was, it's probably just some more bullshit. So, um, but then I hear sirens approaching a lot. So I get up and I got straight out of bed and looked out and saw the fire and grabbed my camera. So that's what I showed. Um, they got that the fire is out now, the fire company is gone, and uh, these neighbors are over there salvaging what they can. Quite a bit of the furniture is burnt out on the front lawn, unfortunately. It looks like it was a kitchen fire. Um, looking at the stove that's hauled out in front, it looks like it, that looks like that's where it started. It's been cold here in Omaha. Now today is supposed to be the first day um, that we get, get up around 20 degrees, but it's been on, down in single digits. That's something I learned a long time ago that's dangerous and you're not supposed to do is, you're not supposed to heat your house with your oven, but people do it anyway. Um, I don't know that that's what happened, but I bet you that's what's happened. Bless my neighbors, I hope they'll be okay. The Red Cross is here. Um, you know, when these things happen, this is the second fire. I've lived here in this house over 20 years. There's been a fire, two doors up this way years ago, and that house is abandoned. These folks have been living across the street from me for almost as long as I've been here. I've lived here over 20 years. I wonder what's going to happen. I, I hope they can um, restore the house. But these things, you know, when they happen, it just always makes you thank your, your lucky stars and also makes you... Um, makes me review um, my uh, emergency plans for getting out of the house alive um, because some of my windows are barred. That's why I bought the house because the woman put iron bars on most of the windows, but I do have an act, I do have an exit plan. It also again reminds me of the temporary nature of everything. As much as I love my record collection and all this stuff here, it's just stuff and nature can take it like that. And I think it's important for me, I don't know about you all, but it's important for me to always remain grounded in that reality. This is just stuff. And having some sort of illusion about its value. It's just good to keep stay grounded you know stop and think about it you know your house is on fire you got to save your life am I gonna run in here and try to get save some records are you I guess there are some people who would but um, I don't even make sense to me listening to first house Erendira it's on the ECM label and this is, again, this is good. This is one of those records, and I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to kind of just say, there have been some general statements where people have said, many people have said this, that that ECM got to a point where everything sounded the same. And I don't know about that. I think if you listen closely to everything on the label, it's got something to offer. And this is a good example. You know? So the sax player is not blisteringly good. 
so there is a suggestion of a type of ambience that we've heard before. Isn't that the same thing that happens when you buy ZZ, ZZ Top album after ZZ Top? No diss on ZZ Top, what I'm saying, you hear what I'm saying, right? This is good music. It didn't sound all the same to me. Right quick while I'm here, some records that I pulled that I haven't played because I've been, you know, touching up my records with inner sleeves that I got from clear bags, but Salvation, some old 60s rock, I need to, I have two of their albums, I have to play this, play this this morning, uh, Sublime Media gave this to me, Rasa Oasis, this is generally pretty, pretty awful, you know, I love having it though. Like the second track, it's like these people are devotees who can sort of play, and then you can tell they can, you know, they're just adequate musicians. It's not inspired at all. The best thing about this is the cover. The second track, the second track on side one was, got through a couple minutes of it. Dr. Progenstein is not necessarily a VC member, but he's someone who posts and has been posting on here a long time, stopped. He's back to posting. He's someone whose record collection I've admired for years. And he showed hard stuff, Bolex, Dementia. He, his latest video that I saw is about this band, Hard Stuff. So I pulled this because I had always wanted this record for the cover. And when I finally bought it, I didn't really like it because, again, of what I'm looking for. But listening to it again after watching his video, I listened to it with new ears and it was more enjoyable. It's not the sort of thing I'm looking for. It's more hard rock. There are some kind of prog and interesting um, aspects to the uh, arrangements here, which I had kind of overlooked. So I enjoyed this last night. Played some of this last night too. Actually, I said I didn't play these records, but now I'm realizing I actually did play some. Lester Bowie, Brass Fantasy, Advent Pop. Oh, this is very good. Very, very good. Fontella Bass just died. That was his wife. You know, Lester Bowie's been gone since, I think, 99. Fontella Bass, who had a big hit in the 60s with Rescue Me, was married to Lester Bowie. Played this. This is a boot of the record. The Five Day Week Straw People. Guy and David. This is a boot. Uh, I'm pretty certain this is a bootleg a pressing of it. It's a good pressing, but this record is psychedelia maybe as early as 1970. There's no date on here. It's a, I think it's American, but there's a British flavor to it. Quite a few songs are very good. Others don't quite make it. Five Day Week Straw People. This was uh, fun to listen to. Chris 4127 Basket gave this to me a while back. Flame Dream. I was in my F, so I put this on. And this is an example of Prague where I love the music, and then when the vocals come in, it's like it almost destroys it. But if you ignore the, the uh, in my opinion, kind of pretentious vocals, this is very good music. Thank you, Chris, if you happen to see this. I'm very glad you gave this to me. Out in the Dark, Flame Dream. On Vertigo. I played a little bit of the Spread Eagle. Once again, it's like thumbs down, but it's still out for further investigation. On the other hand, this is excellent. Benny Maupin, Moonscapes, hell yes. Killer. 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 Pulled this and played this. The band is called Strange Days, Nine Parts to the Wind, UK band. I think it's the end of the 70s or early 80s. It's kind of a 75. To me, there's kind of a, it's prog, but there's a kind of a sailor's jig feel to a lot of this too. Um, the instrumental parts though, on most of the songs are very good. Once again, it's one of those situations where, yeah, this is an original uh, too. This apparently goes for money now on Retreat Records. 
But when the vocals stop and the band just plays, it's very interesting. Very Genesis-like with the keyboards and uh, rhythms. The Strange Days, Nine Parts to the Wind. Pulled this, haven't played it yet. It's a compilation about Akron, Stiff Records. Uh, it features Jane Aaron, the Belvedere's, the Bizarro's, Chai Pig, Tin Huey, the Waitresses. Now, I had an original copy of this where it was a s scratch and sniff. You scratched the tire and it smelled like rubber. This is a re reissue, though. Just pulled this. Again, I was recovering it with the uh, inner sleeves that Clear Bag gave me. Thank you again, Clear Bag. So... This is out. I don't know. I may not play it. I just left it out. Some of the things that are out to play, to, that, to, to recover, but also to play. Patrick Moraz and Syrinx, Coexistence. I don't remember what this is like. Morning Glory, Two Sons Worth. John Cale plays it. I believe he engineers this. John Cale is... One of the engineers on this album, yeah. Morning Glory, Two Sons Worth. Early 70s, early 70s, if not still the 60s. I pulled this, Roland Bouquet Paradia. I believe it was in the band Catharsis. And um, it's on this wonderful Cobra label. It's been a while since I played this. The last time I remember played this, it seemed like it was kind of bubbly and light, which doesn't mean it's bad. Some jazz that I have to re-familiarize myself with. Hamiet, Bluiet, Marcello, Mellis, Don Moyer, Bars. I know this is good, I just can't remember it. What's the label? Musica, out of uh, France. Another one it's time to re-familiar myself with is John Blake, Maiden Dance on Gramavision. He's got Cecil McBee on here, Kenny Barron, McCoy Tyner. You know, with, with players like that, there's gotta be something good on here. Well, it doesn't have to be, but you know. And then Black Sun Ensemble, I forget what this is like. I've always liked the cover, but I can't remember what it sounds like, so... Anyway, things have quieted down. Looks like my neighbors are taking off with one. Uh, they're taking stuff out of the hall, house, taking it somewhere. Hope they'll be okay. Have a good weekend, y'all.